Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flow. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. Marilyn Vanitas by Audrey Flack. If I had to pick one painting to represent the phrase, life is short, it would be Marilyn by Audrey Flack. It's a super realist shrine to Monroe, the movie star. Flack pioneered this painting genre in the late 1970s. Many now call it photorealism. These artworks use optical clarity to profound effect. Flack depicted objects in precise detail. Many of her works explore photographic concepts. Such themes include how pictures shape our reality. Monroe's iconic image sets a perfect example of this. The world knows her face. Audrey Flack gives us Maryland photographs of her pre-operative brunette, natural youth. Her broad, toothy smile reads, Girl Next Door. This isn't your typical movie star bombshell. She's au naturel. Her hair's pulled back to show an open expression and naked face. Where's the bombshell we all know as Monroe? That's Flack's point. This movie star is more like an image than a real woman to us. She lives in our minds as a Hollywood fantasy. We may know facts about her life and every Monroe movie role in alphabetical order, but her photos and films work more as a disguise than spotlight on her humanity. So Audrey Flack brings the person, Marilyn, into focus with this painting. Why Vanitas? Vanitas comes from the Latin word meaning futility or emptiness. This was a thematic art movement from the 16th and 17th centuries. It focused on death imagery as well as time indicators. That means items like clocks, calendars, and hourglasses. These things measure and mark time's passage. In Marilyn's case, time stopped early. She died so young that Monroe will always be a bombshell to us. So these timepieces point to Monroe's death as much as her life. We see wry references to her unique beauty, like the pear. It parallels her perfect shape. This also refers to the traditional Vanitas paintings of yore. They often included fruit because of its short shelf life. Produce symbolized the transitory nature of mortality. What's my favorite symbol in this painting? That burning candle illuminates the painting's thematic core. It alludes to the fire of Monroe's passionate fans, as well as her tempestuous loves. But even more, the candle represents time's slow burn. Our beloved glamour girl burnt out too soon. That's only one of the reasons she'll never be forgotten. It's no coincidence that Candle in the Wind became the classic Marilyn Monroe song. Elton John wrote it in 1973. Then Audrey Flack included her candle in this 1977 masterpiece. American painter Flack pioneered superrealism, also known as photorealism. This means object fidelity or appearing real. Marilyn, the painting, includes photographs and looks like one, too. That's the playful meta-element in Flack's piece. It sets us up to question the scene's reality. First, it appears to be a photo. Once viewers see it's a painting, we wonder how it's so true to life. 
That makes the point of this kind of realism. The whole idea is to question how we perceive things. This artist constructs a specific site for us, sure, but don't we all do that all the time too? When we set a table for dinner, that's one way of constructing a scene. We decorate the interior of our homes. Our clothes often reflect how we wish to appear. These are all everyday, constructed realities. The movie star got trapped in her particular construction. She's stuck for all time in that bombshell Hollywood role. But Monroe was also a flesh-and-blood woman, a timeless symbol of tragic feminine beauty in pictures. Marilyn was also a person when the camera stopped shooting her. I chose to do this painting now because of the Monroe quote that became so popular these days. It was the one where she said, if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. If anything, this quote only points to her childlike perspective on relationships. It assigns her the role of the quote, high maintenance woman, end quote, and robs her of being a responsible adult role. After all, few want to get in deep with a partner who needs to be handled. That's what children are for. Speaking of kids, Marilyn was famous for wearing five layers of signature red lipstick. This has always reminded me of how a child wears their mother's makeup. They layer it on thick as if putting on a mask. In Monroe's case, that was a movie star facade. That's why Flax painting feels so refreshing and honest. It's as if she unearths Marilyn, the woman beneath all the trappings. She's the one who's been gone long before Marilyn's death. The painting's timepieces illustrate more than Flax's technical skill. They illuminate how this real woman Marilyn was lost to us long before the Hollywood star died. Marilyn Vanitas, FAQs. How does Marilyn fit and not fit the Vanitas painting category? Audrey Flack's super-realist Marilyn Vanitas painting represents a modern take on Vanitas artwork. These traditional Dutch and Flemish works of the 16th and 17th centuries were often still lifes, Symbolic of death and the ephemeral nature of life, we see a lot of skulls in these paintings. There are also many timepieces, produce, and lit candles. These all point to the swift passage of mortal time. With Marilyn Vanitas, Flack replaces the skull with photographs of the movie star. Then she models classic Vanitas artworks with fruit, a lit candle, and many time markers. Why is Audrey Flack an important painter? When the MoMA purchased an Audrey Flack, it was the first photorealistic painting in their collection. That was in 1966. This shows what a pioneer Flack was. She helped springboard the superrealist slash photorealist painting genre. She has earned many awards, medals, and honorary doctorates. Her work spanned many styles, though. For instance, she painted her Vanitas series, including the famous Marilyn piece, in the mid-1970s. Later in her career, Flack found superrealism limiting. She branched into other categories. Flack also developed quite a career, even though she was self-taught in the genre. She punctuates American art history. In fact, her work exhibits in almost every U.S. state. That includes permanent collection in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Smithsonian, and many more esteemed museums. Where can I see Marilyn Vanitas in person? This photorealist masterpiece lives at the University of Arizona's Museum of Art. I saw it in a traveling show, though. That was in the exhibit called WAC, Art and the Feminist Revolution, organized by the Museum of Contemporary Art Los Angeles. 
I highly recommend seeing Marilyn Vanitas in person. That's because it's quite striking face to face. There's a sense of ultra reality to it, which helps viewers understand the reason behind the term, super realism. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K-Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K-Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.